If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I'm usually always spreading positivity and I try to be encouraging and inspirational to people who are trying to become programmers and learn how to code and get a job as a software developer. With that said, I want it to be known that I'm not trying to be negative in this video. I just kind of want to talk about some of the things that people will often hear about working as a programmer that makes it seem like a very glamorous job and makes it seem like it's a, like the best job in the world. First of all, I want to say that working as a programmer is a hard job. It's not easy by any means. No matter what kind of software developer you are, if you're a web developer, if you're doing machine learning, if you're doing data analytics, if you're doing any of those things, writing software is hard. Understanding how to solve problems is hard. And having to do that every single day can really be stressful and can wear you down. And that's why developers tend to only last at certain jobs for two to three years is like the average lifespan for a developer at a particular job and then they tend to move on. And burnout is a really common thing in this industry and in our field. And that's why I wanted to talk about some of the lies that you may hear some of us tell you on YouTube. I remember hearing these. I know that I've said them myself. Some of these things that I'm gonna mention here you know, they're not complete lies, but I would take some of these things with a grain of salt when you hear them coming from people who are talking about learning how to code and becoming programmers, because I know myself included am guilty of saying some of these things. And again, this is not meant to discourage anyone, but I want people to realize that this isn't a rock star job that you're gonna just have the best time of your life every day at work. At the end of the day, it's a job and more than likely you're gonna be working a nine to five, you're gonna be doing the same thing pretty much over and over every day. And one of the first things that I wanna mention that you will often hear people say is that it's a fun and exciting job that never gets boring because you get to constantly be writing code and building cool stuff and doing a lot of awesome things that you think that you'll be doing. And I'll be honest, the most fun I've had with coding was when I was learning how to code. I honestly think back to the days when I would sit around all day long just trying to understand what I was doing and try to build my own little projects and try to work on my own stuff and try to get ready to get a job. For the last three and a half years, I've worked two different jobs professionally as a software developer. I'm self-taught and I went through all the struggles of learning how to code and I remember hearing a lot of people say how cool this job was and how, how amazing it was and how great it was. And while it's true that it's a great paying career, it's not as fun and exciting as many of us make it seem to be. So just think of jobs that you may consider that are fun and exciting, right? Now think about what a programmer does every day. We sit at a computer and we stare at a screen pretty much all day long. We answer emails and we write code. If we're lucky, we only have to go to a few meetings once in a while. And I talked about this in the video where I kind of poked fun at people who make day in the life videos for software developers because that's why they have so much stuff going on in those videos to make it look exciting. That's why they show themselves going to the gym and making their breakfast and walking around town and all that stuff. Because when it comes down to it, being a software developer is a pretty boring job. And that's one of the first things that I wanted to make sure that people know that it's not as fun and exciting as some of us make it out to be, as some of us tell you that it is. While it does have great perks and it's an awesome job, staring at code all day and trying to figure out what it's doing is not that fun and exciting. And I just wanted to mention that one first. Another one that I wanna get out of the way is that the work is very rewarding. That it's just, you're gonna be building stuff that you're gonna be so proud of and you're gonna love and you're gonna, you're gonna really have a lot of passion for everything that you build. Now, if you're working on your own startup, if you're working on your own projects, I feel that that's more true than what it's like when you're working for a company and you're building something for someone else. And I just wanna elaborate on this a little bit. I work for a company that is building an application that is used to assess people with disabilities and older people in order for them to get health benefits and government benefits. Now, that is an awesome thing. And I love that that's what I get to work on. But it's not so rewarding in the sense that, yes, I am helping build this application, but at the end of the day, it's not something that I created. And while it does help people, it's not so rewarding in the sense that all I really do all day is build forms for people to type in data. I don't really get to build anything that's 
spectacular or groundbreaking. And while some people will get to work on some cutting edge technologies and some people might get hired at some really cool companies doing some really cool stuff, I guess it just doesn't feel so rewarding to be building forms all day that just takes in data and saves it into a database. And honestly, that's what most applications do. So while I do get to work on some stuff that does help people, it doesn't feel as rewarding as it sounds in theory. And I wish that it did, and I do like that I get to build this stuff over building stuff that's just for a corporation that's trying to make money. I feel that when I work on something and I make an optimization for the user that has to take an assessment, or if we optimize part of the system that we're working on that helps ensure that people get the correct benefits and things like that, it is rewarding, but it's not rewarding every single day. And many people might make it seem that way when you're just learning how to code and you really think that you're going to be feeling that all the time. It's not really the case and I don't always feel that my job is very rewarding. All right, the next one is freedom of creativity or feeling like you're gonna be very creative all the time or you're gonna get to touch on your artistic side or think of stuff and solutionize things in a very creative way. While this may be true for designers a little bit more than developers, I still feel that it gets told to a lot of people who are looking at software development as one of the things that will be part of your job is that you're gonna be able to create solutions and use your imagination to build stuff or better optimize things. And while it is true that sometimes you'll be able to come up with a creative solution to fix something, most of the time, all I'm doing is taking data from a database, displaying it on the front end, and then on the front end, I'm building forms or inputs that take the data from a user and then save it to the back end. That's pretty much all I do. And that's what most applications do, like I mentioned before. So the fact that many people tell you that this is a creative job or it'll be a creative outlet or you'll get in touch with your artistic side. And I did feel that when I was learning front end development and I was learning a little bit of design. And like I mentioned, this is probably more true when you're a designer that you'll be able to be very creative but when you're a developer, not so much. And just to elaborate on that some more, the freedom of creativity only goes so far until business wants to do something a certain way. So even though you might be able to be creative, if your creativity goes beyond what the business wants you to do and isn't in line with their idea of how an application should work, it doesn't matter how creative you are because if business shoots it down or your client shoots it down, you have to do it how your client wants you to do it. And of course, if this is your own application and this is your own startup or your own company, then you can do whatever the hell you want. But for the most time, you're gonna be at the mercy of business or you're gonna be at the mercy of a client. And even though you think something is better done a certain way, if business doesn't want it that way, a lot of the times it's hard to convince them differently. So just keep that in mind when you think that this is gonna be a very creative job and when you hear a lot of us tell you that you get to get in touch with your creative side because I felt like that a bit, but the more I do this, the more it feels less and less creative every day and it feels like I'm just doing the same thing all the time. All right, one more thing that you always hear people say, and I know I've said this before, is that you get to build cool stuff. And this is one of those misconceptions or those lies that a lot of us have been telling you that Building cool stuff is not really what you'll be doing all the time once you get a job as a software developer or a web developer. You may get to implement new things, you may get to build some new features, but most of us aren't gonna be building cool stuff all the time. Most of us are gonna be working on the same website or set of websites or the same application all the time. And while some of those applications might do some cool things, the granular parts of it aren't usually that cool. And once the whole thing is put together, it may be really cool, but all the small pieces that go into building something that's really cool doesn't feel that cool until it's complete. So yes, you'll be able to build cool stuff, maybe if you have a job where you're gonna be building cool stuff, but for instance, my first job, all we were doing was building websites for a corporation in order for them to drive traffic to their company and get people to book rooms for their hotels. And there's only so much that you can do to make that cool. 
And even when we did work on something that was, you know, considered cool, at the root of it, it was just saving cookies that saved users information and then displayed stuff to a user based off of what they were looking at previously on their cookies. Now, business thought it was amazing and it was groundbreaking and they even called it AI, but the developers that were working on it knew that it was just very simple stuff that we were doing and we were just basically looking at their history and seeing if they visited our previous sites and then displaying things according to what they were visiting on our other websites. So at the end of the day, it wasn't that cool, but I guess some people thought it was. And again, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to tell you that you'll never build anything cool. And I guess this is where side projects come in and this is where you'll get to, you know, touch on the creative stuff that you wanna build and build the cool stuff that you wanna do. And that's why I think that developers should have side projects. And even if it's not code related, you should still have side projects that help your creative and your artistic side because I think everyone needs that. As humans, we're just creative and we need that kind of stuff. So it's always good to have something that is a creative outlet for you, but don't believe that you're gonna get that from being a software developer because you're gonna be building cool stuff all the time. With that said, I didn't wanna make this video negative. I'm not trying to take the wind out of anyone's sales who is learning how to code and really looking forward to getting that first developer job. And I just kinda of wanted to clear the air with some of the stuff that you'll hear a lot of people say that make people want to pursue a job in software. Just remember that it's a job. It's fun at times, just like any other job. But at the end of the day, you're sitting at a computer, you're writing code all day, and sometimes it gets monotonous, and sometimes it gets boring, and sometimes it's just not what everyone is telling you it's gonna be. But, you know, then you can always explore new opportunities. It's a great skill to have that you can use to build your own things. It's also a very sought after profession and career that many people need developers. So you'll always be able to move around, you'll always be able to find the new job, and you'll always be able to continue to grow. It's not all bad, but I do wanna just mention some of the things that everybody's always saying that I always thought was pretty funny once I got a job as a developer and realized that some of that stuff just wasn't true. And it almost felt like people were just trying to sell you on becoming a software developer for whatever reason. And I know I've done it myself and hopefully this video clears up some of the stuff that I may have fibbed about. And again, it's a great job. I love what I do and I'm glad that I decided to learn how to code and become a software developer and I'm really happy that I get to do a great job that pays me very well and gives me great benefits and gives me the freedom to be able to move anywhere in the world and know that I can find a job. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it didn't discourage anyone. And if you wanna see more videos on me talking about learning how to code and becoming a self-taught programmer, make sure to subscribe to my channel, comment and let me know what you think about all the stuff I had to say in this video. And thanks for watching.